Hi, I'm Jen, and I want to talk about the previous house I lived in that cost $47,000. Yeah, you heard that right. It was 47 grand, 47K, 47 Gs. And I want to talk to you a little bit more about, you know, why we decided to buy a house like that, what's it like, and also how do you get that sort of deal. So, while I live in Atlanta now, previously my husband and I lived in Florida. And back in 2009, we were looking for a house together. Previously, I'd owned a condo in Texas, and I actually did make a little bit of money on it before there was that market crash of like 2007. I literally sold my house in May of 2007, and then it crashed several months later. So I was extremely fortunate, and with real estate, my husband James and I have just been very, we've had very, very good timing with things overall. One thing you should know about us is that we like to live below our means. So we had a goal of having a house payment that we could survive and afford on only one income. So if one of us lost a job or something happened to one of us, that we could still live in the house, be able to afford the mortgage and not worry about losing our shirts. So we were looking for short sales and foreclosures in 2009 we had a great great realtor and she was amazing and she actually helped us find this short sale and we paid forty seven thousand six hundred dollars so let me tell you about the house and i do have some before and after pictures so we're gonna get to that the house was built in 1955 it was more of those florida bungalow styles it was a two bedroom one bathroom house the bathroom was pretty tiny and the second bedroom the previous owner had added on a screened in porch so the second bedroom actually had a sliding glass door in it so at that point i wouldn't even consider it a bedroom plus it was absolutely tiny the real bedroom the master bedroom wasn't anything to really write home about either uh, but a good thing is that the house had no carpeting it had tile throughout and laminate flooring it had been somewhat renovated previously but the work had been pretty subpar if you're buying a house like that just know that if you get a great deal on it you're probably gonna have to put some sort of sweat equity into it and do a lot of cleaning we actually spent a few months trying to get it ready to move in before we actually moved in it needed a lot of cleaning it actually had some termite issues so we had the house tented and we just did we tried to do a lot of painting and just general, I don't know, cleaning, deep cleaning before we even got in there. So we lived in the house for about, we owned it for about four years. And in that time we did several pretty, pretty cheap, but very labor intensive renovations. My husband, James, pretty much completely did, redid the kitchen. We also redid the bathroom and he put in some really beautiful finishes. He did a black granite floor since it was the only bathroom we wanted it to be nice. He also did an overlay in the shower. He put a very nice uh, like solid surface panel in it so it looked nicer. And we painted the whole house. We had the outside painted and we also added the washer dryer. And when we moved in, it actually did not have a condenser unit in it. Someone had like taken it. So we did have to get another AC unit, although at least it did have the ductwork. So let me talk a little about the pros and the cons of taking on this type of project, this type of house. So obviously one of the huge benefits is a very low mortgage. I think we put about $5,000 down on the house, 10%, and our mortgage payment was like $530. In fact, at one point our property taxes were $300 for the year, for the year. So our mortgage, and if you're not familiar with mortgages, the payment has your like property insurance rolled into it and some other, um, then your taxes. So, so the mortgage company actually puts into an escrow account what you need to be paying in taxes and what you need to pay for homeowner's insurance, and it takes it out of it. So that $530 a month payment includes all of that. The only thing it didn't include, I, I believe, was flood insurance. I believe we paid that separately. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Because we lived in Florida, the flood insurance was fairly high. It was $1,400 a year. But you know what? That's, that's the breaks of living in Florida. So 
that was all right. So it was definitely a lot cheaper than renting. At the time, rent in the area we lived in was between $1,000 to $1,200 for a decent two bedroom apartment. So we were getting a pretty good steal of the deal. Um, we did have some maintenance to the house. Obviously, there's a lot of things with home ownership that comes with it that you don't have to pay for when you're living in an apartment. And also, because the house was so old, it did have like zero insulation. So we ended up having to do some things. You can add insulation to old homes. You can get it put in after the fact. And it will actually significantly help with your utility bills. So the utility bills in that place were actually fairly high because of the age of the home. But again, the mortgage was so low, it ended up being pretty okay even then. So that are some, those are some of the pros and cons of living in a, a really old house. Obviously, if you're trying to get a good deal on a house, not all of them are going to be old, but a lot of those properties that are very low priced are probably gonna be a few years old. So there's a lot of unknowns about those houses. There can be definitely problems. A lot of homes in the South have termite damage or mold damage, and that's definitely something you should look for if you're looking to buy a house. Uh, but I'm actually really happy that we did not get more of a mortgage than we didn't bite off more than we could chew. That was definitely a very manageable amount of debt for us. And we also have student loans, which I'll talk to, uh, talk about in some future videos. But because of that, we wanted to keep our mortgage as low as possible. So if you're a young couple or if you're a young person and you're looking to buy a first home, I would tell you this, don't, don't necessarily think you need to buy the most expensive house you can. I know it's gonna be very appealing, especially when you see all these new pretty homes, custom builder homes that you know cost half your take home pay. But just think about it, what happens in the worst case scenario? What happens if one of you loses a job? What happens if you lose your job or you get sick and cannot work and cannot afford your mortgage anymore? We personally like to keep our mortgage at about 10 to 15% of our take home pay. That is an amount that gives us a lot of breathing room and flexibility. And you don't know what's gonna happen in the future. Maybe you wanna make some changes in your life and your mortgage payment doesn't make that possible. So that's something to think about. The other thing to think about is getting a good deal and putting that sweat, sweat equity in there means that you could possibly make money on that property. And we actually did. My husband did an absolutely amazing job with the renovation. The realtor said that the kitchen looked like a $300,000 kitchen. And we got some cabinets from cabinets to go. We got some new appliances. The one thing we didn't do for this particular home, we did not upgrade to a solid surface countertop. And that's because the neighborhood we were living in wasn't very high end. If we were marketing a $200,000 house, we definitely would have put in some sort of solid surface countertop, but the neighborhood was a very affordable one. So buyers in that area weren't going to necessarily be looking for that feature. And we ended up selling the house for $85,000, which was pretty awesome. We did put some money into it. When it's all said and done, I think I estimated we put in about $18,000 worth of appliances, you know, renovation costs and the air condition. That also includes the air condenser unit. So all in all, I think we sunk about $18,000 into it. That also includes the tenting for the termites. But, you know, walking out of the deal, I think we pocketed about $35,000. That certainly wasn't bad. Of course, you have to pay your realtor's commission and other certain costs for closing. But we were very happy with that amount. And at least we felt like living there gave us a bit of a financial leg up and we actually used that money from the house the proceeds we used it to pay off one of my husband's student loans so i'm going to be talking about some of these uh house stories in future videos so if you enjoy hearing about this sort of thing feel free to subscribe to gen talks forever and also let me know what else you'd like to talk about um for anything and i'll see you next time